Well, good morning, everyone. We pray the Lord to bless our time together as we have come to his house and to worship him. And we're going to commence our service, and we're going to sing together Psalm 40. Psalm 40, a great psalm, and verse 1 to the end of verse 5, please. And we'll stand to sing off to the key. Thank you. I win. Let's unite our hearts together. Let's all pray. Let's seek God's face as we come into his presence and into his house. Let's pray. Our loving eternal Father in heaven, it is in the wonderful and great name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we become, Lord, into your presence. We thank you, Lord, we can come with confidence. We come through his blood. We come pleading, Lord, his righteousness. We realize we have nothing in ourselves to bring to thee. But we thank you, Lord, according to thy word, we are accepted in the beloved. We come as the children of the Lord, those of us who are saved this morning. We come to gather into thy most holy presence. We thank you, Lord, for even this great psalm that we've been singing reminds us of the wonderful grace of God in our hearts. How, Lord, we were in that horrible pit and merry clay and, Lord, sinking down towards hell. And the Lord heard 
our cry and lifted us up. And Lord, set us upon a rock, the rock Christ Jesus, and put a new song in our mouth. And we here we are today, the children of the Lord. We have come, Lord, into your house to praise thee. So we ask, Lord, that you be with us in this time of service and worship, that even, Lord, our sacrifice of praise will be acceptable in thy sight. And I will touch our lips. I will, Lord, will touch our hearts today and help us in your house to praise the God of our salvation. What a great God we have to come to worship. We look across the world. We look across our land. Our people has no interest in thee, Lord. And we look upon the many people and they're bowed down before false idols and gods. And yet we can come into your presence and we can bow before the true and the living God, the one who has loved us, the one who sent his Son, the Lord Jesus, into the world to die to save us. And Lord, we come to thee. Oh, come to us today. It's your presence that makes the feast. We want you, Lord, to be one of our number today. I want you, Lord, to speak to all our hearts and to strengthen your people. Maybe some in the congregation today are struggling. And we pray, Lord, you'll lift them up today. Maybe some have fallen. They need restoration. Maybe some, Lord, is full of fear. They need encouragement. I pray that you will minister to the hearts of your people today. I pray, Lord, for the children. We thank you for what has taken place this week. Uh, good to hear of the great number of boys and girls under uh, the Word of God for Brother Phil there who preached to them, for the helpers, all who played a part, laboring together with God. I pray, Lord, there be signs following the, the preaching of the Word of God. And we'll hear of young people, even yet, because of the Holiday Bible Club, that they'll come and put their faith in Christ. And there may be some today in the congregation, maybe young people today, older people in this congregation this morning, and they don't know thee, Lord, have mercy upon them and bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask of thee. Oh, bless this congregation. Bless Mr. Gray and his wife and family in his holidays. Bless the work of the Lord here in Tender Gay. Do a new thing. We pray, O oh God, that the best is for this congregation and for this work is as yet to come. And Lord, do it to write our denomination. Do it in the end for, I pray of thee, and glorify the wonderful and great name of our blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Covers in, your, in the blood now. Fill us with your spirit. Be with us in our time now of worship, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing another hymn. 134 is a great hymn. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea. And maybe you're feeling the, the pressure of the Christian life today. Maybe you're struggling. Well, you think of the words of this great hymn. And, and, and I trust the Lord, even through the words of this hymn, will speak to your heart. Christ is praying for all of his people. We'll stand to sing 134. Thank you.
If you have your Bibles, we want to turn to the book of James, the epistle of James, and the chapter 4. The epistle of James, and the chapter 4. And we're going to read from the verse 1. James, then, chapter 4, and the verse 1. From thence come wars and fightings among you, come they and not thence, hence even of your lust that war in your members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask a mist, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulterers, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, Speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thy judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver, who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that thou judgest another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas, you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. So that you ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. And we trust the Lord will bless the reading of his word to all of our hearts. And I'm going to call on our brother Leslie, and he's going to come and give the announcements, please. Uh, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to everyone on our service this morning, even if you're watching online. And you could be in any part of the world this morning as well. Uh, it is a very warm welcome to everyone because we have a beautiful morning outside. Our speaker today is no stranger to us, it's Mr. Noel Shields, and we thank Noel very much for coming today uh, while our own minister is on vacation. And most of our announcements are, are up on the screen, but our speaker next week will be the Reverend John Morrow. The singers tonight is Ethan and Anna, and our singers next week will be the Hannah family. Tonight is the final night of the drive-in service. So I just bear that in mind, please. Just as this is to, tonight is the final night. And there's also a prayer time before each service. So uh, even this evening, down in the Sunday School Complex, at 6 p.m., we'll meet for half an hour's prayer. On Tuesday night, the prayer meeting and Bible study at 8 p.m., and Johnny Jordan will uh, be leading our prayer meeting and Bible study. Just a word of thanks for all those that took part in our Holiday Bible Club this past week. It was a very busy week for everyone that was involved, and a special word of thanks to Johnny and Jane for the work and the effort that has been put in there, and everyone that was involved for organising the buses, to getting all the children here and home again safely. We, we, we do thank everyone for their input and for their help. Just want to announce also the sports fun nights, which is not this week, it will be the following week, the 20th to the 22nd of August. And that will be happening down in our Sunday School Complex, where we'll, we'll be meeting down there. So that's from 7 to 8.30pm, 
and as for those aged 11 to 17 years of age. During this period of vacation for a minister that is, that is off, uh, the minister in charge then will be the Reverend David Smith, the Reverend Trevor Baxter, or Mr. Johnny Jordan, should anyone need a visitation or any other assistance at this time. I do think that's all by way of announcements for, for this incoming week, but as I said, all is on the board there before us, and uh, if you need any help, or even with a minister, please contact any of the elders, and we'll certainly direct and help in any way we can. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to thank our brother for the warm words of welcome, and nice to be with you here in Tandragee. And uh, lovely to see you this lovely morning, and we pray indeed that God will bless us as we come to bring his word. Thank you very much for your prayerful support, those who pray for me as an evangelist and uh, doing gospel campaigns. We had a number of campaigns uh, this year uh, down in the south of Ireland, Cora Gary, Ben and Lorne, the Martyrs, Glen Ann Orange Hall, Newton Ards, and uh, we've been around doing uh, preaching the Word of God. And over the summer now, I'll be doing holiday Bible clubs, five day clubs, and that I'll head to Kyra Fergus in the morning. And uh, I'll be doing three down there this week. And then next week, a holiday Bible club in uh, Newton Abbey. So I'm glad to hear that you had a good week yourselves for the boys and girls. And uh, you had many boy children in to hear the Word of the Lord. And we need to reach the children with the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and that many of them may come to Christ and be saved. We have different missions planned. Colin and I will be getting back together. He goes one way over the summer. I go another way over the summertime. And uh, then we get together again in September and we have a number of missions planned in different places. The first one then in September will be uh, outside Cross Gower, near down Pathak, away out in the countryside. I had to go the other night to look for the hall. I didn't know where it was, but I found a wee hall out in the country. And that's where we'll be starting off then in September and uh, preaching the Word of God there as well. With all the missions planned, to take us to the end of the year. And so do pray as God would use us as we go through the land, or we land, he needs the gospel. It's the only answer, the only answer for tender gay, the only answer for uh, our province is the gospel uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for us as we bring the gospel message up and down the land, and I pray that many people will come to Christ. Now, we're going to lift our offering, have an offering hymn, and it's number 200. Uh, Grace, tis is a charming sound, harmonious to the ear. So, we'll keep our seats, and uh, as the offering and our tithes are collected, please. Hymn 200. Thank you. Thank you. 
Amen. If you have your Bibles, we want to turn to the portion that we read together, uh, the book of James and the chapter 4. I want to speak, uh, beginning here at verse 6, uh, speaking about our God, it says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He giveth more grace. So let's pray together. Let's pray God will minister and speak to our hearts here eh, this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you for our coming together. We come, Lord, in the great name of Christ. We come with your word. We're glad it is the word of God. And we pray for help, Lord, as we minister. We need the spirit of a living God. And I pray that you'll touch many hearts today in this meeting. And in fact, I pray, Lord, you'll touch everyone's heart in this meeting today. We pray you'll change those who are unconverted. You'll encourage your people this morning here in the service. So we ask for thy help, and bless us now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm glad when we open up the Bible that we have before us here this morning, you've one on your lap, I trust, and we open up the word of the living God. Remember this, every time we open up the Bible, we're brought face to face with God. And the Bible reveals to us great lessons, great lessons about our God. The very first verse in the Bible, uh, I was speaking to the boys and girls this week there and on along, the very first verse in the Bible brings us face to face with God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you go right through this book, and it brings us face to face with our God. And when we come to church, we come face to face with God. We want to meet with God when we come here in the service. We come to praise Him. We come to pray to the Lord. We come to preach the Word of God. That everyone, everyone in the meeting, young and old in this service this morning, would meet with God. And when you come to the Bible and you meet with Him, and He's a great God, and you glad you're in church this morning, and you glad you have the Bible? Remember David said, Who is so great a God as our God? Like the challenge was how David was saying this boldly, and he was saying these words confidently. Who is so great a God as our God? And every one of us I trust this morning can say, There's none, there's none as great as our God. He's a great God. I'm glad I can say today, He's my God. He's my God. He's a great God. He's a, a good God. And I want to say this to everyone in the service. God is good, and He's good all the time. All the time. Dark clouds, moments, suffering, trouble, sorrows, does not mean that God is not good. God is good, and He's good all the time. And He's a giving God. We find when we come to the Word, God is very generous God. He gives many things to His people. James has only commenced this particular epistle in James chapter 1 and verse 17, and he says, Every good gift and every perfect gift, a gift is from above, a cometh down from the Father of lights. And James is writing here to people who were suffering, and he's saying here, remember this, that every good gift, every good gift you have, it comes down from the Father of lights. I want to say that to every child of God this morning. Everything you have in your life, where did it come from? Your family, where did it come from? Your home, you said, no, well, I worked hard. Well, that's good, you worked hard. You're, you've prospered in this world. You have many temporal blessings. I asked you, where did it all come from? It came from God. He gave you everything you have. And the mother can look to say her children and say, well, God, give me these children. God, give us all these blessings. But every one of us has, every, every one of them. Remember Moses said in Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, and he's speaking to the, to the children of Israel, and he's soon to take his leave from them, and he says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he 
that giveth thee power to get wealth. He looked at the people. They had their silver. They had their gold. They had their jewels. They had been brought out of Egypt with great riches. And he's speaking to them. And he said, listen here, it is he, it is God that's given you power to get wealth. God give them everything. You think of Song of Solomon? Or Ecclesiastes, sorry, chapter 2, verse 26, Solomon says, But God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. He's a great God. He's a great God, a giving God. He gives us. He gives us everything. Everything I have. Everything you have, child of God, this morning. God has given that to you. And there are many other things he gives. But here's something here that James writing to a people. There's stroking, there's wars, there's fighting, there's disputes. And in the midst of all of this, he says these but tremendous words, but he giveth more grace. I know God give us health. He give us life. He give us eternal life. He's given us many blessings. But here is something God gives to his people. He give grace. You say, well, what is grace? God's unmerited favor, or divine favor to his people. He giveth more grace. I don't know about you. We'll come to it in a moment. I need grace every day. And so do you. Everyone in this service. Anyone who's listening online today. We need grace. We need the grace of God. And here James is writing, he's writing confidently, and he's writing boldly to the people. And he says, listen, here's something, here's something about God. He's a great God, he's a good God, he's a generous God, he's a giving God, and he gives, he gives grace. He giveth more grace. And I want us to look at this for a few moments here this morning. I want to say first of all about God's grace, finding God's grace. Because notice here, you'll only find grace with God. He's the one who has it. And this is something God gives. We think there in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, there's going to be a flood. The whole world's going to be destroyed. The whole world is going to be wiped out. Here's what we read in Genesis 6 and verse 8 about Noah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, notice there's going to be darkness, there's going to be destruction, there's going to be death. But, there's a but here in the Bible, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Where did he, where, where did, where did he find this grace, the saving grace? Where did he find it? He found it with God. You find it with Christ. We find there in Acts chapter 15, verse 11, Peter's preaching that great first church council because they're bringing in the Gentiles. Some people's not happy. There's disputes. They're arguing. And Peter rises up. He rises up and he proclaims to the people here about the conversion of the Gentiles. And in Acts 15, verse 11, he says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved. Even as they, this is what he's standing, this is what he's saying. He's talking here about saving grace. And he said, we believe this. The Gentiles, the heathens, those who are in darkness, we believe, we believe that they'll be saved even as us. How were they saved? By grace. By the grace of God, by the grace of Jesus Christ. This grace is found through the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember when John was writing the gospel in John chapter 1 and verse 17, he says, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. I think about him. I think about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who had everything in glory. He's the perfect Son. He is God the Son. He's in heaven. But you know what the Bible says? He left heaven. He left heaven. And he came down into this world of woe. And here's what the Bible says. He came down, what for? To bring salvation. I want you to think of these words. In Titus 2, verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Notice, the salvation. The salvation that's real. The salvation that's everlasting. The salvation is found in Jesus Christ. It came down. It came down from heaven. It came down from heaven by the grace of God. Did you deserve salvation? 
Did I deserve God's salvation? Did I deserve? We were singing in Psalm 40 about being taken out of a horrible pit and out of the married clay and, and set upon a rock. Do, do, do you and I deserve God's salvation? Do we deserve His mercy? Not one of us. But oh, that wonderful grace of God. He sent Christ down to save us. Remember Second Corinthians 8, verse 9, he says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's right. Do you know this? Do you know about him? Do you know the grace? Do you know what he, do you know what he has done? Do you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich? Do you know these things? Do you know this wonderful, wonderful step he made from heaven? He came down from heaven, down into this world of woe. He went to the cross, and he bled and died upon the cross. Philippians chapter 2 talks about Christ's death. He went to the cross, went to death, and here's what he says right into that church at Philippi, even the death of the cross... And we see Christ hanging, dying on the cross. It's all of grace. It's all of grace. He took our place. He took our punishment. He endured the wrath of God, you see. He came to save sinners in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, being justified freely by His grace. In Ephesians 2, by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not a works place any man shall, shall boast. In Galatians 1 and verse 15, Paul talks about being called by grace. So how do we find this saving grace? We find it in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we were singing that hymn there, the offering, Save by grace alone. This is all my plea. Jesus died for sinful men, and Jesus died for me. Where did we find the grace of God? We found it in the Lord Jesus Christ. You find it in Jesus Christ. That's why we sing that great hymn sometimes. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me. It talks about a young man in, in America years ago. He wanted to join a church. So the deacons got around him, and they start to question him about his salvation, his testimony. And he says, well, young man, how did you get saved? Oh, he says, well, God did his part, and I did my part. Oh, they looked, well, there's something really wrong here. There's something wrong with this answer. And so they questioned him and father, and says, well, well, how did you get saved? Well, he says, I'm telling you, what happened? God did his part, and I did my part. Well, he says, well, could you, really, could you really explain to us what you mean by this? Well, here's what he said. God's part was the saving, and my part was the sinning. I ran from God. I hid from God. I didn't want Him. And he says, here's what God did in all His grace. He ran after me, and He searched for me, and He called for me, and He saved me. And that's what He meant. And the only part I had in salvation it was my sin to put Christ to the cross. Finding God's grace. It's only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the child of God, you found the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe you're all converted to this morning here in this meeting, and you're without Christ, without God, and you're without hope. You can find, you can find the grace of God today if you come to Jesus Christ. You can only find it. And there is grace. I want to say it today. You say, Noel, I feel wretched. I feel a great sinner here today in this meeting. Yes, yes, you may be a great a sinner, but we have a great Savior. We have a great God. He gives grace. God can blot us all out in a moment, but He doesn't do that. He giveth more grace. I want you to see that this morning. The finding of God's grace, found in Christ. The freeness of God's grace. And, and you notice that. Right? He giveth. This is, this is something that God gives. He gives it. You, you don't earn it. You don't deserve it. I already touched on that in the force. Why not one of us in this service deserves the grace of God? We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. We don't work for it. We don't pay for it. You can't pay for God's grace. How much are you going to pay for His grace? Could you tell me? He gives it. He giveth more grace. It's free. It's free. 
He's free. I, I've told you in the introduction that our God is your great God. He's great. You think about his love. How much does he charge you for his love? It's free. What about his mercy? It's free. What about everlasting life? It's free. What about a home in heaven? It's free. It's free to you and me. He paid the price. Remember, Christ paid it on the cross. He giveth more grace. His grace is free. And He gives it freely. And He gives it freely to all of His people. I want you to notice that this morning. He gives grace to all. To all of His people. You can't sit back and say, well, He doesn't give me it. You remember sometimes, maybe you're growing up at home and some of your children get something else or your brother and sister, and you say, well, I didn't get that, and so on. Well, here I want to say this morning, God gives grace to all of His people. Because Ephesians 4, verse 7, it says, But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Notice, to everyone, Paul is right in here to this church at Ephesus, and he's saying, listen, to unto every one of us. And I want you to notice here this morning, there's none, there's none has been missed out. There's not a child of God in his service has been missed out. He giveth more grace, and he giveth grace to all of his people, and he gives it freely to us. If I got what I deserved this morning, I would not be stunned preaching here to you in this church. And I want to say this also, you would not be sitting and listening to me. Not one person. We deserve God's wrath, but he giveth grace. And he giveth to all his people. B.B. Warfield said, grace is free, sovereign, favor, to the ill-deserving. To the ill they don't deserve it. We sing that great gospel hymn sometimes, Years I spent in vanity and pride, Carry not my Lord was crucified, Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Then we sing, Mercy there was great, And grace was free. It's free. And we find here this great God of the Bible, this great God who loves us, this great God who sent His Son into the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives grace to all of His people. And He gives it freely. And He gave it to you freely this morning. And He gives it to the humble. For He says He giveth grace to the humble. And the word humble can mean lowly or a cast down. Humble. Maybe, you're, maybe, maybe there's someone to meet in here this morning and you're cast down and you feel worthless and you feel useless. Well, every one of us has the same feelings sometimes. We wonder how we're going to go on. But, we, um, but here's the wonderful, wonderful thing. He giveth grace to the humble. We have nothing to be proud about. Not one of us in this meeting. We have nothing to be proud about. We have a great God. He giveth grace to the humble. And so humble yourself unto the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt thee in due time. And this grace, I find, you know, it, it, there's a freeness in it. And God will give you grace, whatever it is. We'll come to that in a moment or two about this grace. I want to say then about the, the fullness of God's grace. He giveth Notice the word more. And that word more can mean larger or greater. There's a great fullness in the grace of God. And when we can come to the Lord, we find He's full of love. We know this. We know He's full of mercy. And we know He's full of power. We know there's no one as strong, as mighty as our God. We know He's full of wisdom. We know when we come to God, He's infinite. There's a great fullness in the Lord. Well, he's full of grace. He's full of grace. The Lord Jesus Christ is God. Remember this? Remember, he's full of grace. Remember in John 1, verse 16, it says, it says sorry, John 1, verse 14, and the word was made flesh. And it says, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Notice these words, full of grace and truth, Christ. He's full of grace. In the same chapter, verse 16, he said, and of his fullness. 
have we received on grace for grace. Notice, notice here, he's talking about Christ. He's talking about the fullness of God's grace. He's full of grace. The grace and grace. And Second Corinthians 4 talks about abundant grace. And what is abundant means? To make increase. It's large and it's full. And I want to say this. We need every bit of God's grace. We need God's grace for all of our life. Every bit of our life. Every part of our life, sorry. And this grace covers all events of our life. He giveth more grace. You think of the fullness of God's grace in relation to the people, to their sins. Sad to say God's people still sin. We're not what we used to be, and, and, and we know that. John Newton, that who was really held by sin and far away from God, he says, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I am not what I hope to be, but still I am not what I used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. There's, there's not a child of God in this service uh, this morning. I hope there's none on can say, well, I, I'm spotless. I, 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 I'm, I'm in myself. I never sin. I never fail. The uh, Bible says we'll be telling lies if that's how we operate. We sin against God. We fail. We're not what we once were. But there's grace. In Romans 5, verse 20, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the fence may abound, but where grace abounded, sin did much more abound. Notice here, there's sin, but there's grace. There's sin, there's, there's grace, there's falling, there's failures in the life of the child of God. But notice here, there's grace, there's grace, there's grace for God's people. And I want to say to any child of God today, maybe some have fallen. Maybe you've fallen over the weekend in the past week. You're full of guilt this morning. Maybe some of God's people has been in places last night where you shouldn't be. There's grace for all your sin. Ask God to forgive you. There's always grace. He, he is loving. He is kind. He is merciful. He is, he, grace covers all our sins. Not wonderful. He doesn't hold spites against God. His people. He loves them. And there's grace for all our sins. And, and we need it. And what about the sorrows of life? You have not got your sorrows to seek in this world. In Psalm 34, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not just there's going to be a few, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. There are many troubles for every child of God in this church. And there are things that happen to break your hearts. Maybe things have happened in your life at this moment. It's broke your heart. It's broken your heart. Perhaps last night there was no rest within your soul, within your heart. Maybe there were tears in your pillow last night. And what do you need tonight? Or what do you need here this morning? You need grace. You need God to give you grace for help. I thank God there is that grace to help. Number says, come boldly to the throne of grace where we obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And God giveth grace. And he gives more to us. And we need it. We need it constantly. Every day we need it. I need thee, Lord, every hour, every hour. I need thee. I need thee, Lord. I came across an illustration by the man called Booth Tucker preaching in Chicago one day, and he was preaching to this large crowd. There was a man in that particular congregation. His whole life was full of trouble. Well, Bruce Tucker, he preached. He preached about how Christ was dear to you and how he can help you and, and sustain you and all the rest of it. And this man was not happy what he was hearing. And he came up to Booth Tucker at the end of that particular meeting, and he says to him, he says, listen here, he says, could you say such words if your wife was dead? And your children's crying for their mother, and she's not coming home. Could you stand up and preach the Christ enough? Well, the preacher had never thought maybe of this. Maybe Hobbes couldn't really answer the man in a sense. But a little time later, Booth Tucker's wife died. And she was killed in a, in a railway accident. And they brought her body back to Chicago and carried into the Salvation Army barracks. 
And who got up to preach at his, at his wife's funeral service? It was Booth Tucker. And he started to preach. And he says, the other day, a man came to me and he asked me, he asked me here, could I say that Christ would be sufficient if I lost my wife and if my children were crying out for a mother, could I say Christ is enough? And I couldn't answer him. But he says, I want to say here standing, if that man's in the congregation, I want to tell you Christ is enough. My children may be crying. I feel the loss. But there's a joy, there's a comfort, there's a peace within my heart. And I want to say, I want to say, He's enough, Christ is sufficient. How, how could this man face us? He giveth more grace. Are you there this morning, child of God, in the meeting? Sorrows and troubles in your heart and life. Remember the Apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he besought the Lord three times. Take away the thorn, Lord. I feel it. It's hurting me. It's breaking me. I'm struggling. Take away, take away, Lord, the thorn. And what did God say to him? He said to him in verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And the word sufficient means be enough. Listen, Paul, I hear you. I hear you crying. I feel your pain. I see your tears. And you've asked me, and you've asked me to take away the thorn. But I want to tell you something. I'm going to give you something far more better than this. I'm going to give you grace. And that's what he got. Sometimes God doesn't take away the problem. But he gives you grace to bear it. But he's answered the prayer. See, there's a great fullness in the giving of the grace of our God. He gives grace to His people time and time and time of need. And if you're going through something today, I want to say to every child of God, He giveth more grace. I have met in my ministry many God's people who have suffered terribly and suffered greatly. And they're still going on today. And they're finding God's house today. And they're singing hymns today. And they're praising God today. How can they do it? Because He giveth more grace. There's more grace all the time. There's a great fullness in the grace of God. We think of that little course. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To add an affliction, he addeth his mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplieth great peace. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no bounty known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. That's why I said to you here this morning, there's a great fullness in the grace of God. He giveth and giveth grace every day to us. He giveth again. Even in our serving the Lord, we need uh, the grace of God as well. Because we think the Apostle Paul <coughs> talked about his service and uh, how, how did he do it? How, how did he serve? He says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He talked in verse 10 of that particular chapter, 1 Corinthians 15. He says here that he says, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I. Notice, but the grace of God which was with me. He's talking here about this ministry against the other apostles. And he says, listen, I labored more. I labored more than all of them. Well, Paul, how did you do it? How did you suffer such persecution? How did you do this work? He says, but actually, it was the grace of God upon me. We can never take any credit for anything. We are, we are, by the grace of God, child of God in this meeting. Maybe you have a service to do for the Lord in this church. Maybe you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm dreading the Sunday school starting up. I'm not saying that to keep it. Maybe, maybe you are. You're, you're, you're dreading. You've been doing it for years. And you're saying, well, how, how am I going to continue? How am I going to do this? Well, I want to tell you how you can do it. He giveth, he giveth more grace. Grace to help in time of need. 
He's a great God, and you look to him and cry to him, and he will give you grace. He'll give you grace in life, and, and to die as well. That day will come. Maybe some today's fear and death. Well, you'll get grace to die. You'll get grace on that day to die. Stephen's been stoned. Stephen's been hated. There he is. The stones are reeling down upon him. And yet he died with great grace. I want you to get this tax in your heart this morning. Every child of God in this meeting, he giveth more grace. There's grace wherever you are. Wherever you are. I'm not asking you to tell me, but wherever you are today in your life, up on the hill, you need grace. Up on the mountain today, you need grace. Down in the very valley today, you need the grace of God. Suffering, pain, and sorrows, you need the grace of God. But you have it. One day at a time. He giveth more grace. The fullness of the grace of God. Can I say a last thing very quickly about the flowing of God's grace? He giveth more grace. Now, we, in the Greek, it is the present continuous tense. Well, that, you say, what does that mean? Well, it means it's something that keeps on coming. It keeps on coming. It never stops. It's just flowing out. He gives it day by day. This is coming out from our God. Week by week, month by month, Year by year, it's a continuing flow of God's grace. It's flowing out from the throne of God. It is flowing from a God who loves His people. He giveth more grace. It says in John 1, verse 16, I already made reference to it, and of His fullness have we all received and grace for grace. It's always coming to us today. Why are we in this church the grace of God. It's flowing to us. Someone one time submitted a picture of the Niagara Falls to an exhibition. Didn't put a title on it, but when the people looked at it, they thought, well, I could do a good title on it. So I don't know why I've ever been to Niagara Falls. I had the opportunity of being at the Niagara Falls uh, myself one time. They tell us now that there are 757,500 gallons a second flows over the Niagara Falls. It's an amazing sight to see. And there it is. The water's flowing over all the time. And, and the thought that, uh, well, the, what title can we put in this particular picture of this that, that's been put in exhibition? And someone came up with the idea, put on the words, more to follow. Well, if you look at that picture, <laughs> there's more to follow. It's flowing over all the time, friends. Now, scientists ra recognize, and I said, in 23,000 years' time, we'll not be about, by the way, but they reckon because the way the earth's going and this is going, I couldn't tell you. They're probably talking nonsense, but just say, they say, in 23,000 years' time, there'll be no water. <laughs> it's all been flowing out. But I want you to notice this. The grace of God will still be flowing out to us. It never ends. The very last book of the Bible, in Revelation 22, verse 21, how does he close it? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Right to the very end of time, into eternity, what is flowing out from God to his people? The grace of God. There's more to follow. <laughs> Every day, there's grace. You get grace today, and when you get up tomorrow, child of God, you're certainly going to need help. You're going to need grace to bear whatever burden or whatever you've got to do for the Lord. And forget you need His grace every day. I need Thee, Lord. Every day you're going to need His grace every day. But there it is, it's flowing. It's flowing out to you every day. Every day. Grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a fullness. There's a flowing of the grace of God. So don't be afraid of tomorrow. We can trust the God of our salvation. He giveth grace. Whatever you're facing, whatever you have to face, and whatever I have to face, so I have my fears as well as any other child of God. Whatever it is, you will find that God will give you grace. Just pray and ask Him, Lord, I need your help. And there's grace to help in time of need every day. You'll find it flowing out all the time. Like just a picture, as I said, the Niagara Falls. There's always more to follow. And if you're not saved, we trust you'll come to Christ today and you'll find saving grace. That's where you've got to start. We're right, right round in a circle. You've got to come to Christ today. 
And if you come to him, you'll find grace. Not wonderful. You'll find mercy. And you'll find salvation. We're here to help you. If anyone has any questions, any God's people, or anyone unconverted, you want to speak to me, and maybe our backslider this morning, there's grace. Not wonderful. He's a God of great grace. Turn to him before it's too late. Turn to him on safe this morning before it's too late. And trust Christ. Let's all close the meeting together and we word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of the Bible. He giveth more grace. And Lord, we need it. And we struggle. We have to be honest. We do. We all struggle. We struggle in the battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. We fear. We have unbelief. We doubt. Lord, forgive us. We're glad there's the grace of God coming to help us to live for King Jesus. Bless us, congregation. Meet the need of everyone who's bowed in thy presence, I pray. Take us our separate ways. Bring us back again tonight, uh, Lord, to the drive-in gospel service. Bring people in to hear the word of God that they may come to Christ. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen.